Hey, how are you, everyone? Uh, well, we will be talking today about this uh, new roles and how to reach uh, roles here. Actually, I'm not a developer, so I need to kind of present myself <laughs> to make you know who I am. I'm Ezequiel from Chile, that's why the accent is not so Irish. Uh, I, I have been working in like eight years in, in different kind of startups. Uh, usually I work with a lot of uh, recruiters, so always my, my job or my roles have been really close to the HR sector, in, in the tech sector, in the industry and, and all this stuff. I moved to Buffalo like six months ago. Actually, I started working last year like four months ago, so my experience is short, but it's a really amazing experience. And I'm here now from Chile, and it's interesting because a lot of people ask me about Chile. And Chile is this long country in South America. <laughs> it's not like this, it's this really long country. I have to actually, if you want to know about how Chile is, how long is Chile, <laughs> you can see that it's huge, it's really amazing. When I saw this in Smitch, I, I thought it was fake, but actually it's, it's real. You can measure it. And actually you can use Chile as a, <laughs> as a scale to, uh, to measure things. So we are here about like two and a half Chile from Chile. <laughs> so yeah, this is Chile from there, so yeah. Uh, if, what, what we will be talking to today will be like more we have here because I cannot see. Uh, we'll be talking about the roles in this industry, how these roles appear, how the industry creates new roles every day. Uh, some of your hand in hand is like the deliberate of the presentation. And some, something that is called the hidden job network. This hidden job network is a deliberate <laughs> too, but it's something that I learned actually here in the UK. So, and it's really interesting. <coughs> <coughs> okay, roles. There's too many roles, to be honest. If you go to this menu, you saw this key menu thing, where you can see, oh, the resolution is not the best, but you can see a lot of roles in the games industry. Actually, if you are uh, 17 years old, and you want to kind of decide what you want to do in your, with your life, and you think that games are a good idea for you, and you have a really complex decision to take today, because in the past, like 20 years ago, it was like, okay, it will be a programmer. That's all. <laughs> you only need to go and start, but now the, the amount of specialization is it's huge actually. And with this low, uh, low cost graph, <laughs> I, made a, I didn't find a, a, a good graph like myself, so I made one. Uh, if, if we put ourselves today, we see that uh, we have a lot of specialization in the world, so in the, everything we are doing today in the games industry. But actually, this is not strong. Now, there's a lot of more technology, more market trends, and a lot of stuff that actually will make that we will have a lot more jobs. Actually, there's something in the, in the recruitment sector that we are now in the era of the three names jobs, like a Unity Game Play Program. And probably in the future, we'll have like four, four names, or four words names for, for the jobs. So, yeah, the specialization is huge. So, uh, how what will be the next role, uh, what will be the next thing to work in the games industry. And actually, I didn't want to do it myself. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I, I actually did what everyone do now, is like talk to chat GPT, like my, my best friend. Oh, and actually I say this to 10, because you never know when the AIs will <laughs> take, take the world, so they will say, yeah, I say, yeah, say please two times, so you know, feel free. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> when you see all the all the roles that you that actually ChatGPT in this case they offer you like new roles in the games industry, so you can see a lot of roles that today we have those roles in some kind of uh, companies, and maybe they're not so popular. And actually, I did the research by myself and I started like putting all these jobs uh, on you know, Indeed, LinkedIn, and all of, all of the kind of job work things, and you can find those jobs. They are not like so 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 popular. Uh, but yeah, uh, actually, ChatGPT don't know <laughs> what will be the new roles in, in the future. <clears throat> and actually, uh, I think if we if we want to kind of predict what is going to happen about the new roles in specific, we maybe cannot really predict what is going to happen in five years or ten years. Maybe the next year, yes, uh, I can give you that. But five years or ten years is kind of impossible. But actually. The thing that we can know is where these changes are coming, where what we have to, to see, what we have to focus on, to actually know 
what, uh, where is this kind of changes or new roles are, are coming? And you just see that there's a lot of roles that we are really used to for to, 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 to the aims of these roles, like AR programmer, technical artists, environmental artists, and a lot of roles, different roles that today they are really common for us. But like 10 years ago, or maybe 20 years ago, maybe a lot of these roles didn't even exist. And because of many reasons. So actually, uh, there are four, well, this is a lot of uh, things that says, uh, so how I say about this, but I think, this is my personal opinion, this is three factors that actually, if you see them, you actually can think or you can not predict, but you can feel where the next thing is coming to. Uh, and this is all the, the, those three. The first one is technology. Technology is all the changes in technologies always uh, allow us to be more creative, do things that in the past we, didn't, we couldn't do, so technology allows us to actually create new roles. Then we have player, player behaviors. Players, you know, you don't, you don't have the exact same things today as, I don't know, 10 years ago, because a lot of players, or us as players, uh, started to behave differently. We started to prefer different things uh, or play in different moods. And actually, market trends. Uh, we all know about the esports, we all know all, all about the things that are coming in the market, so the market actually help us to develop a new goal. So, yeah, uh, these are like three things that if you are always like looking at them, probably you will know when new roles are coming, and this is really interesting. And how to kind of hack people? Why, what if I want one of these new roles? So what if I want to realize any role at all? Uh, this this one kind of, I will say hack, but probably something that you know, but if you are in this process of looking at a, a new job, probably this is a good thing to know. In the basis, in any ball, any job, you can find this process through this, uh, this interview process, and all the students have the thing, but usually every studio when they are hiring have these five uh, part of this process. So you have a moment when they see a synchronous uh, like your CV, your portfolio, a cover letter, or whatever they ask you for in the application process. Then in a screening call, they actually ask you like uh, your motivation, they want to validate some things in your portfolio or your CV for a first call. Then you have this kind of technical assessment. Not always you have a technical assessment, but in most, most of the roles. You, you will need to prove that you have the non-negotiables for them. And actually, they want to see what is your potential in this process. Then you have interviews. The interviews usually so is our, uh, like culture fit things. It's like, it's basically, you don't want to work with assholes. <laughs> so you, you always want to work with people you actually like to work with. So actually, it's, it's really important the interviews because in the interview, they won't see many soft skills, as they say. They, they actually, want to see if you are a good fit for the team. Uh, so, yeah, it's simple, but uh, sadly, or a or about thing, it's all about probabilities, to be honest. And actually, it's like this question. It's how, <laughs> what do you also selling a uh, PS5 to a 85-year-old person? I mean, you can, you maybe can sell a uh, PlayStation to an 85-year-old man, but it's the odds that are like so low. And it's actually the same in the, in, in the recruitment process. When you are looking for a job, you need to know who is the person you are talking to, who is the studio you are talking to. Because if you are not doing that, probably you are trying to sell a PS5 for 85 years old. And that's really important. And a question that uh, our I didn't spoke about Master and Master in Samuka. <laughs> we have a lot of creators, we help them uh, to reach their career goals, and actually I'm the one who helped them to get jobs. And actually, one of the questions they always ask us is um, how, how, in, how I can actually learn about my process if I'm not receiving any feedback. And it, it's really common to apply to jobs and nothing happens. And actually, you don't receive any email, you don't receive any call, and you expect to, something to happen, but actually nothing happens. So you're like, I'm not receiving any feedback, I cannot learn about this process. So, uh, a lot of people say looking for a job is a job by itself, but it's not any job, it's more kind of a sales job. But not the sales job, not any sales job, it's more like the vacuum of the sales job. 
is what do you do with all the information you have through this process? So instead of looking at the process like now, uh, this kind of process uh, with uh, arrows, you can see the process more like this. It's more like a funnel where you have all your applications in the top, and then whenever, whenever uh, you are applying to things and things are uh, starting to convert or things are starting to maybe told you that you want to go ahead with the process, uh, you can see the conversion rate of all your process. And this is really important because when, I don't know, uh, you have like your first 20 applications, uh, then you wait like, I don't know, two weeks or something, and you can actually see what, what is the part of this uh, funnel, uh, let's say, that actually you're not performing really well. And when you uh, see what is that part of the funnel, actually you can uh, start trying to learn some stuff about yourself and about how you are doing this process. And then you can actually start to fix and tweak all the things that you actually have for this process. So actually it's, it's more like, it's not only you need to change your CV or you need to change something specific, maybe uh, this gives you the information to where to focus. And maybe it's not only your things, it's maybe what are you looking for. Probably uh, you're applying to jobs that are posted like a month ago, and probably in that, that, uh, that uh, position in particular, yeah, they have a lot of candidates, so they want to prioritize you. So yeah, uh, and a good way to do this is actually a simple spreadsheet, a notion, a job, whatever you want, where you can actually see all your process. This is really important. This brutal simple is really important because here, it is an example of course, uh, if you see uh, someone, uh, I don't know, uh, applied to 12 jobs, but actually only got uh, a call for, the, for only three. So this is really important because uh, if you try to improve your uh, placement process and you're trying to improve how you want to interviews, probably you are not getting the most uh, information about the process. The thing you need to do now is like review your application process. Usually when you apply to the right jobs, to the right companies, and in a good timing, usually if you have like a 40%, it's a good conversion rate for this job. So probably the first thing you should do is like, okay, let's fix my application process. Then you go to the next one, the next one, the next one, the next one. Actually, well, probably interviews and technical assessment usually are not always the same uh, are in the same order for any studio, but you know, you got your idea here. Uh, and yeah, when, uh, we have been helping some creators in, in, with this, trying to help them to reach their goals uh, and reach, of course, uh, a job. And this is one of our goals of one of our creators that it, it reflects exactly what I, what I wanted to, to say here. It's like, it's brutal and simple. And he, in like three months doing this, he start changing everything, like very simple tweaks of what he was doing and he got a job because of he could learn a lot about his own process without receiving any feedback. So I think it's cool. Uh, and it's, of course it's about probabilities, but it's about maximizing this probability. So always think when you're looking for a new, new opportunity in the job in the games industry, always think how I can maximize these probabilities. Uh, and yeah, uh, this is a really good point too, uh, this is like the whole time. Uh, uh, this is a really good one about uh, an interviewer in the entrance that we, we were talking to them, we always send this like uh, feedback, uh, forms when they hire or something. And uh, this guy told us like, I don't know if I want to actually hire the best or a perfect developer or a perfect artist, I actually need to hire someone who can work at my standards. And the deadlines and the deadlines will work because probably there's out there some really cool and really good artists or developers, uh, but they maybe don't know how to, uh, they don't have this self awareness of how much time it will take them to uh, go through the deadline. So, for, for this kind of reviewers, so usually uh, they want people who have this self awareness to actually say, yeah, I can do that in that quality and in this time. And this is so valuable. Why do we put this quality? It's because all the process of getting a new job or a new opportunity in the games industry is, is it's more about self-awareness and how you learn more about yourself. Uh, and, and to finish, I think, uh, I don't know, 
much time, but <laughs> I have been talking. Uh, how you can enter into this hiding uh, job network thing? Uh, and actually, simplifying the block, this is for the US, but probably it's really similar here. Uh, but 65% of the jobs you find in, in, in the world, well, 65% of the jobs are not in a visible way. They are not LinkedIn, they are not in any job uh, board, and actually you cannot apply to those jobs. Only 35 approximately uh, are jobs that actually you can see. And this is because a lot of students know they will have a project in the future, they know they want to use some kind of technology in the future, they know they, they will apply to some form uh, to develop something new, they, they know that. But usually the, the, the way that a lot of students work is like a lot of collaboration, a lot of uh, testing with people, sometimes they, they, they can hire you like a freelancer for, for starting the relationship. But yeah, a lot of jobs they are not posted. And this is very important because there are some strategies that you can, or well, not strategies, there are some things that you can be aware of and you can actually uh, start getting into this high job network. It's like for us to be aware of the tech trends. It's like if there's some new technology that you feel like it's something good or you enjoy and you want to do anything about it, just start doing it. That's the most important thing. Uh, second, maybe events like this, uh, if you go like, uh, I don't know, Discord, uh, Discord channels or, or anything, uh, actually be part of the community, uh, be a, an active part of the community. Like, building this kind of uh, brand for, of yourself was really good in the games industry. If you're continuously talking about some topic, you're more likely every day for someone to actually ask you maybe for help and maybe you can start a relationship or that actually offer you help. Offer my offer you help. It's really simple what you can get. Maybe you can get a project, maybe you can get a project on something that you need for the job that you want to apply. And maybe you can uh, meet someone who can actually um, I don't refer you to another another person. So it's really important to offer your help. Actually, you don't accept to offer your help to anyone because your time is limited. But actually, offering your help is a really good way to do uh, to yourself. Uh, so I hope at least you, you know where's the children. <laughs> 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 <laughs>